Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Sander Lanch podcast. Today, we are discussing the Alloy of Law, chapters 11, 12, and 13, wherein we meet Miles. Turns out he is the bad guy after all. Who who would have thunk it? We, we also meet his good friend Clamps, uh, <laughs> who does not clamp anything in particular yet, anyway. Yet. Uh, we meet his boss, Mr. Suit. Then Wax, Wayne, and Marisai do some investigating and some discussing of said Miles' hundred lives. And then there's a dramatic fight on a moving train. Very, uh, very action movie-esque, I think. So I am Data, and with me is... Jack. Janie. And Joe. So hang on to something, everybody. The Sander Lanch is about to begin. And the walls they curl The grip of greed It rains There's just one track To lead this moving train The price of progress Is a dying world The price of trust Is pain after the wrath The bitter shame Look up into the night Pillars of risen Bathe all in their light Forward we run so yeah, what did you guys think of these three chapters and all these new folks that we're meeting? Like the first couple of chapters were just like, all right, this is kind of interesting. All right, yeah, meet Miles, Clamps, Mr. Suit. And like, this is, all right, a bit of fun here. And then, like, the investigating stuff. I was like, yeah, all right, this is all stuff that happened. And then the the fight on the train. Oh, that, that one got me. That was easily <laughs> my highlight this week. I loved it. It's the old unspoken law. It's like, you know, in superhero movies or westerns or anything like that, if there is a train, you can bet someone's fighting on top of it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Actually, doesn't. They can, they can apply to many genres. Mission Impossible did that. Anyway, yeah, I love that. Um, like seeing seeing Miles and Wax fighting against each other was just so freaking cool. Seeing what they could do and them yelling at each other. I'm like, yeah, I am 100 percent invested in this. This is awesome. I guess I should ask, like, what do we, now that we've met him and found out a pretty decent amount about him, like, what do you guys think of Miles as a bad guy or guy? I guess. I mean, it's fitting for Brandon, I guess that like. A lot of villains or antagonists we've had in the book so far are people who genuinely believe they are doing the right thing. Now, whether he goes full Hraithen and realizes that he's doing actually doing the wrong thing and does a does 180 at some point, yet to be seen, but I guess it's possible. Hmm. But yeah, no, I just enjoy seeing like he's he's competent, he's good at what he does, and he's committed, he's got conviction. So that's all the hallmarks of a good bad guy. I like it. Yeah. So from Miles' perspective, the Jedi are evil. <laughs> <laughs> That is kind of his his whole speech. I mean, come on. Yeah, but, you know, better. You, you replace the word Jedi with the word lawman or whatever, and it's like... Yeah, but Wax doesn't have the high ground, so... <laughs> well, he can. He, he can. he can fly up into the air. He's a coin mm. shot. <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. And uh, when, he, when he pushed him off the train, he did. True. I like these chapters as well. I'm glad that we got that action sequence. I think we're at a point in the book now where we need something again like that. We sort of had what happened, you know, the odd explosion here and, you know, the the raid on the ball and, and things like that. But it was nice to have some just good, solid fighting. And Miles' powers sound terrifying and just that he could regrow his limbs and stuff. Like, what? What, what even is that just in front of you? It's, it's just, just nuts. So I, I think he's a pretty cool, pretty cool bad guy at this point. Maris as well, having her alimentic ability. I thought that was nice that we kind of got that answer as well, that she does have an ability. Interesting that it's opposite to Wayne's, but I'll leave my thoughts on that to later. <laughs> yeah, just we're, I guess, halfway now, just over halfway through. Yeah, 66% at the end of these. Yeah, okay. I was looking at the book and I was like, oh, we're actually further along in this than I thought and perhaps it's because we missed last week i just mm. thought we were a lot earlier in the book than what we were yeah it was it was nice to get a bit of a viewpoint from miles as well i actually liked that in the, the beginning of the chapter 
the investigating is, is going well, but I'm glad we got some confrontation in there. Um, it was a lot of fun. I like that the whole time, you especially have been like, I don't know about this Marisai. Uh, she seems like maybe she's hiding some. And it's every time we get something new that she's hiding, it's like, oh, by the way, she's like Steris's half sister. Oh, by the way, she's also an Alamance. Yeah. Like, there's just more and more. I just, I don't entirely trust her. I'm like, what aren't you, what aren't you telling? And she blushes way too much. Like, to the point <laughs> where, isn't she just always blushing? Like, how do they can tell that she's blushing? Doesn't she just look like that by this point? <laughs> Um, anyway but like I, I like her character I just am not I don't fully trust her I know I'm like secret bad guy but I you know I, I don't know there's something going on with her for sure okay I was really hoping I was like oh what if like Miles 100 lives is Marsh and then he took his mask off and I think he's got black hair and I was like mm, probably not <laughs> <laughs> sort of hoping for it though and I wonder if, like, if if Marsh is still around, and if he has that power, like, to be able to heal that well, could could he take spikes out and like heal his eyes back? Or I don't know. Well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was like, that that would have that would be really cool. So these chapters, I, I agree with everyone else. They're good. The fight scene was was cool and intense. So starting kind of at the beginning, we've got. Miles with Mr. Suit. I like the. I I don't feel like Brandon does this a lot, so this was a cool moment for us to get to see, basically from an enemy's perspective. I think I think the most we've seen him really do that would have been in the third book with Marsh, but Marsh was kind of an unwilling tool in those little scenes. So that was mm. cool to get to see this, where it's just like we're seeing from one of the enemy's perspectives, and we get this mysterious figure of Mr. Suit, which just seems really. I don't know. It's super cliche, but at the same time, like still enjoyable. You know, it's like one of those cliche things that you're like, oh, I like this kind of thing. Um, so that was that was actually fun as opposed to boring. Funny note, when we were my wife and I were driving to, to go pick up food and I said, oh, I still have to read these chapters, though. I'll drive. Will you just read it to me? And the part where we were reading the part where um, and, and she has no context because she hasn't read any. Right. So we're reading the part where where Wayne is talking about uh, Marisai's, like, basically positive <laughs> oh, attributes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, we get to the part where he's talking about her boobs, and, like, I had to explain <laughs> that's what she, he was talking about. <laughs> she was like, God, what is this book? And I said, yeah, you, you, this is kind of a weird place for you to enter into the story. I, I apologize <laughs> about that. So, anyway, that, that was just a fun little tidbit. But, uh, yeah, their their interaction was funny. But then, yeah, the fight scene is really where it was at with these chapters. A cool fight scene. But the one thing I have an issue with is this compounding thing. I feel like we don't have enough explanation for why it works the way it works. So that's kind of confusing to me. Like, why, why, why having the same both metal make it better? Don't understand. Well, Brain and- not work good. It Compounding is a new term that hadn't been used before, but we did see the same thing happening like that's that's what the lord ruler was doing with adium to like yeah. make himself younger yeah so it's basically just like i think the way they that says describes it back in the original trilogy is like you're storing this thing and then you're pulling it back out but powering it with the power of alamancy like the power from the metal so you basically supercharge it uh i guess it's, that makes sense so basically instead of just not... using your own power He's not burning the alamant. He's not burning it alimantically in order to utilize it for its alimantic use. He's burning it alimantically to store it. So, that... but, so he stores it first. He stores like I guess he stores some health, right? Like a yeah. little bit of health, whatever. Yeah. You burn or you you burn that and tap into that health and then power that health with the energy of alamancy, so it becomes like a hundred times more health than it was originally during mm-hmm. the burn and then you can then take that and store that to access later and then just keep doing that to like compound as they call it as like mm-hmm. as much health as you want basically interesting and i like that they brought up the fact that he's he's having to constantly use gold because yeah. if he stops there's going to be some kind of drag which i'm like how would that drag work that'd be interesting yeah uh, would it just like would his like body explode like and and so then it got me thinking like maybe that's how they defeat him like he run he runs out of gold somehow mm. and he just like explodes so uh yeah 
Um, uh, but yeah, I'm interested to see where this goes. Uh, he's now showed his hand, as they mentioned in the book. So it'll be interesting to see. Maybe, maybe uh, it seems like Wax may be onto the freight car thing. So maybe now we're going to see like a confrontation during a robbery. Might be interesting. Hmm. So yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, what happens next. I'm thinking about what what we could possibly like the drag when the Lord Roller had to stop using his like adium, it, he kind of rubber banded back and got super old super fast. Mm-hmm. So maybe yeah. I don't know how that would work with health. You just get super sick really fast. Yeah, he like breaks out and boils all over his body and like he gets oh, like, like super like pukes everywhere, <laughs> like projectile vomit. <laughs> Say so, like yeah, maybe he like his body just starts breaking down. He starts bleeding from like everywhere, and like his, his, his bones yeah. just start falling apart or something. Yeah, he's like pu- he's like uh, I can't stop. Uh, he's like, why don't you just stop uh, supercharging the gold? He's like, won't that crush my bones? It's like, oh <laughs> yeah, yeah bone crushing. Oh, forget forget about about the bone. Actually, actually, no, that, that's what'll happen to his body. It's the dude with the boneitis. Yeah, yep, boneitis. There you go. See, my the only way you were just... <laughs> said I have. Bonitis. The way you were describing it, it made me think of that scene from The Rock where, like, the guy gets trapped with the gas and oh, starts yeah. all melting. Yeah. Bonitis I is a lot less uh, horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> that would be another I, way to I, crash I, I don't know. that I stop West. burning gold. I, I don't know. If Bonitis <laughs> wasn't presented in an animated format, I think it might You're right. be it as would be horrifying. disgusting. Yeah. yeah, and horrifying. I mean, yeah, but also it's not like li- liquidy melting off. It's like, uh, do you guys ever see the Peter, the Peter Jackson movie Brain Dead, or they called it some other name over in the over in the states? I think no. it's like pre Lord of the Rings. It is it is messed up. I think it set the record for like weirdly goriest movie ever um, Dead for Alive a while. That's what it's called here, apparently. Dead Alive. Okay, yeah. Like there's one point where they were pumping in fake blood and they were pumping it into the scene at five gallons a second. Um, <laughs> whoa yeah it's like that's yeah i'm like you you say like bizarrely gory and that's where my brain goes a bit with the ear Ugh. you'll know and none of us know what you're talking about it's just tumbleweed <laughs> I'm, I'm reading the summary now and it's so, horrifying so, so, somewhere there is a listener who's just like having vietnam flashbacks now that i've mentioned it <laughs> they're like why did you mention that movie i i swore never again yep his overprotective mother gets bitten at the zoo by a Sumatran rat monkey what? and turns into a zombie and he tries to keep her locked in the basement, but she keeps escaping and turns most of the neighbors into zombies. And then they crash a high society party. Yeah. Uh, this is worse than Susical. $3 million budget. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And also there's a great part in the cemetery where the where the town preacher just sort of jumps down among all the zombies and yells, I kick ass for the Lord. Does he then get killed? Uh, he actually beats the shit out of the zombies. Wow. OK. Well, he wasn't kidding. Good for him. Yeah, man. You can't just say you kick ass for the Lord and then not kick ass. I thought, you know, it might be like a, a, a ironic reversal or something. I don't think that's ironic in these ages. Well, it was a 1992 movie, so. 92. Yeah, Dak, you're too young old. to have seen that film. <laughs> so am I. I, I. I was alive in 92. I didn't see it then, but I was alive right. then. Right. Yeah. No, I know. I would, yeah, listen, wouldn't have seen that in 92. That would have been a thing. No. I no. would still be um, scarred horribly. <laughs> Whereas now I'm just scarred horribly from different things. So. Right. <laughs> All good. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess let's get into these before we just uh go into nothingness for a while so we we come in we left the last chapters with like wax being like these this cigar box let me tell you about miles and we cut to miles smoking a cigar so it's a full circle here we find out that tarson is in fact a pewter arm and coloss blooded so he's got his arm in a sling but he's going to heal quick and then there's clamps third in command (laughs) he's coloss blooded Colas blooded. Clamps, yeah. Go ahead, Jamie. I, I can't get past clamps. Like, every <laughs> yeah. time I read clamps, it was like... <laughs> uh, I After just I... kept wanting to say, clamp, clamp, kabamp. Yep. <laughs> I have to, I've, I've had to restrict myself from saying that multiple times already this episode. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like, I think Joe said it last time. It's like, oh, like, maybe they could form, like, uh, Miles is the Donbot, Tarson is, is Joey Mousepad. And, like, reading this section here, I'm just like, wow, that actually really fits well. 
<laughs> yeah. After yeah, we talked about suit it. is the Don Bot. Yeah, I guess maybe. He's not really close to these other guys, though. Yeah. But a After robot we... mafia. The <laughs> entire robot mafia. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you trying to steal from the Don Bot? I'm trying, but he's not yeah, making, it making it easy. It easy. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure we did that joke last time. Yeah, I probably. <laughs> I just, a- after we talked about it last time, I had to go out and watch, like, a compilation of best clamp moments <laughs> on YouTube. And so there's all of them. It's like, what? Yeah. You, these cl- the clamps that I use every day at every opportunity, you think I should use those, really? <laughs> Freaking genius, you idiot. <laughs> It's uh, all rusted from from clamping out. Uh, oh, jeez. Stool, stooly blood or something. Stooly, stooly blood, yeah. Something or like juice. That. It's like stooly juice or something. Stooly juice. Oh, gosh. So, uh, Tarson's like, so by the way, uh, Wax and Wayne have been spotted at the foundry talking to the beggars. And Clamps, he's, he's hardcore. He wanted to clamp all of the, the beggars. Like, we should have just dumped him in the canal. He's even got a scar like Clamps does. Oh. Well, it's on his neck instead of close to the face. Uh, yeah, I guess. And Miles is like, we're not going to kill beggars. That like turns the entire city's underground, an underclass against you and becomes all sorts of inconvenient. And Clamps is like, yeah, I mean, sure, boss, but they saw things. Yeah, Wax would have figured it out. And I like the part where he's, he's like, so I assume that your explosive traps, foolproof though you promised they would be, were ineffective. And he just coughs into his hand. <laughs> <laughs> So Miles was a law key- the law keeper of true metal, which we talked about when we saw the map. It's like, is there a false metal out there somewhere? Deal, <laughs> deal, whatever. Yeah, that's that's um, kilometers is the lawman out there. <laughs> yep, makes perfect sense. Uh, uh, dad jokes for the win. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were just doing so much conversion before the episode started. It, it just carries <laughs> over. Yeah. Speaking of dad jokes, why do you not? Iron a four leaf clover. Yeah. You don't want to press your luck. Waka waka. Yeah. Uh, it, I had a prop for another dad joke. I did it work. I had a little stepladder and I said, uh, I said, hey, have you guys met my stepladder? I never knew my real ladder. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's great. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's stealing that for her work. Yeah. I am incredibly <laughs> sleep deprived today, too. So <laughs> yeah. Be way we'll, tra- we'll talk it up to that. It's not that. Funny. <laughs> so they, they, are, they are refounding their foundry, but in an underground layer that suit Mr. Suit has provided. It is one end of what is apparently the prototype of an underground rail line, which very new uh, concept to these people. Miles is like, how's that even going to work? How's it, it going to go under the canals? That's so weird. It's a subway, moron. And uh, they have like, I don't need a sandwich. <laughs> that took me a second. OK. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. So I assume it's uh, named a subway sandwich because of the submarine. Well, I don't know. Maybe? maybe maybe the first one opened up like in, in a subway station. I just uh, assumed the long shape, you know, they were trying to make it like a submarine or a subway train. Uh, originally named for Dr. Peter Buck, Pete's sub- Super Submarines became, became Pete's Subway in 1966 and two years later, just Subway. Huh. Man, poor Pete. By, that was in 1966. Yeah. And then it, by 1974, they had 16 shops in the state of Connecticut. All right. Okay. Good 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 on you, Pete. <laughs> I don't think they have any do they have any subways in Connecticut? Like the the trains, not the, mm, the French the yeah, the, the actual Well it sounds like I was right. He said originally they were called submarines. Submarines, yeah. I, yeah, wonder, how yeah. You, I wonder how you get to subway from there. Like it's a, a, a word with a completely different meaning. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're like it also looks like submar subway trains. <laughs> Let's do subway. So he Miles has about 30 guys, which is, I think, still a lot, given that he only took 40 on that raid and like 30 some of them got killed. So uh, not a bad number of people, but he's just like we we're so low on dudes and uh, recruitment. It's only been a day. He's like, how's recruitment clamps? It's like uh, we're going to need more time. Uh, half of us getting killed did not make for the easiest recruitment pitch, basically. Yeah. And, you know, me, I'm clamping half of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
they have very little aluminum left. They lost most of what they had in uh, one attack. That's unfortunate. And we get a little bit of talk about his gold mind. Uh, it invigorates and refreshes him. He never feels sick or lacks energy. That must be nice. So he never gets hung over? Yeah, maybe, maybe not. Oh, wait. No, this means like... I was I was thinking it's like oh you know the bad guy puffing on a cigar that's a that's a you know very cliche like cliche sort of thing I'm just like wait he can heal himself like he could he could smoke twelve packs a day and rip all the filters out and he would never experience a, de- yep. like a negative effect yeah right? I think that's why they were okay with Wolverine smoking cigars in the movies because it's like but yeah but it doesn't affect him I guess that makes sense I never really thought about the cigar thing but you're totally right it's like it's not gonna hurt him it's fine. He still has to sleep, and he still grows old. But other than that, he's practically immortal, so long as he has enough gold. I wonder how fast he goes through the gold. I think I don't think gold burns super fast alimantically. We never see it used that often, is the issue, because yeah. no one wants to use it, because it kind of sucks. It's, it's kind of yeah. just like the useless one. Mm. So who knows how fast it burns for him to have to draw the, the health out of it. And Clamps is like, uh, boss, Mr. Suit's waiting for you. Aren't you going to go meet him? And he's like, yeah, whatever. I'll get to him when I get to him. And he's very he's like, look, Wax was going to show up sooner or later. I, we lost more men than I would have liked. Sure. But at the same time, now that he's in, we can anticipate him. So it's it's kind of a plus, really. It's really looking glass half full. But uh, all right. And I like Tarson. He's like, so the men, there's talk that like you guys set us up since, you know, you were both law keepers and all. And Miles has his thing where he's like, no, I'm still a law keeper. We're not outside the law, not the true law. The rich will make their own codes and force us to live by them. But our law is the law. I am the law. Yeah, he is. the Exactly. (laughs) Men who work for me are given the dispensation of reform. That's that's like very quasi religious here. And I don't know that I (laughs) approve of this at all. But Mm -hmm. tell them I'm proud of them, Clamps. And I, I really love that here's a guy who's like, he's found himself as the leader and he has to give speeches like this, he's decided. But he's like, I don't know if that was the right thing to say. I'm I'm not really built for uh, preaching, as he puts it. But somebody has to do it. So. The men needed conviction from him, so conviction he would display. So he spent 15 years as a lawman out in the roughs and realized that nothing ever got any better. Children still die, women still abused, one man can't change things, not with corruption at the heart of civilization. You have to change things here first, which on some level makes sense, especially given what we kind of find out later in his confrontation with Wax about, like, all these bad guys just show up in the roughs from the city. It's just the dumping ground. And then he thinks, Trell, help me if I'm wrong. The words of founding had included a lengthy explanation of Trellism and its teachings. Which I don't know if you guys remember, but Trell was mentioned back in when Sazed was uh, preaching religions back in the original trilogy. Yes, that's right. I know we've heard this, and I just don't remember where it's come from. Was this the Star one, Trell? Yeah. So I think in the original trilogy he calls it Trellogism as opposed to Trellism, but they both feature Trell. So I'm assuming they're kind of the same deal. But uh, yeah, in in Trellogism, it was like the stars are the million eyes of the god Trell or whatever. That's right. Yep. So I don't remember if we ever found out a whole lot more about that, but it's it's mentioned. So I thought I'd point out the the link back to the originals. So it like, do we understand then from like Sazed to, you know, laid all this out for everyone, all the religions have sort of come back? That's a good question. We know that he included all everything from his metal minds in the books at the end of the original trilogy because he says that he says he put all the stuff, all yeah. the knowledge into these books. So all his three hundred li- religions were in there somewhere. How many of them have revived? Obviously some, although we know they that like, evolved. Yeah, but I was gonna, I was going to say we know that survivorism apparently is a major religion here, and that was that wasn't really an old one. And the path is another major one that we've learned about. Also, that must be new since he ascended. So, yeah, maybe I just kind of, of assumed like... they'd evolved out of what Sazed had presented, and mm. then to have something come back that's fairly old was just a bit strange. It's like that's the one they latched onto, but I don't know if that's got anything to do with, you know, because it is the star- stars and stuff, the positioning of the planets. Like I know that there was. A whole bunch, like it wasn't the location of the different stars in the map 
Blurred says to figure out where the planet should be. Yep. Or something like that. So maybe because there's more involved in that, people wanted to latch onto it. Mm, that's a good point. I'd kind of forgotten that it had that until you mentioned it. It's like, yeah, that's that's true. He that he used that in that way. Mm. Sorry, I'm reading about Trellogism now again to refresh myself. Trell Trell had a brother, Nalt, who was jealous of all these eyes, so he shone his single eye during the day. That's the sun. Mm. So who knows uh, how much? I mean, obviously, it's taken from from that in some way, but how much of it might may have evolved in the last 300 years? And now, yeah, I really want to know, like, how many other religions have like popped up places? We also know sliverism is a thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. But anyway, Miles heads over to meet up with Mr. Suit, full gray streaked beard, sipping tea in an expensive suit of black silk with a turquoise vest. So very stylish. Okay. It's like uh, we joke, we joked about Barney Stinson, but like this, the description makes me think of like Jeff Bridges from Iron Man. Mm, yeah, I could absolutely see that actually. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it says he's bald, but other than that, yeah, I get, I get what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Tony Stark made it in a cave with scraps. <laughs> Man, that's his, that's his real go for it moment in that film. Yeah. It's an, it's an amazing moment. And I, I really love that that guy he screams at comes back in <laughs> like, Spider-Man. Like, yeah. yeah, 10 years later. Still bitter about getting yelled at by his boss. Yeah, even though his boss got killed shortly thereafter. Yep. I was just reading it the other day that apparently he was not originally supposed to die. Like, they, uh, like he lived in the script and, like, climbs out of his giant machine at the end. And then, I guess, on the ground, they're like, nah, kill him. <laughs> I mean, my assumption would be Jeff Bridges is like, yo, I was happy to do this for you guys, but um, I don't want to do another one, so. No, uh, uh, th- that everything I've read indicates he did not care for making that movie. Interesting. That, but yeah, that was that. I learned that from a quote from an interview with Jeff Bridges, where he's like, "Yeah, I mean, I, I did not realize that they were going to kill me off until, because I was not dying in the script." But then I died. <laughs> uh, but I mean, he, he he didn't hate it as much as uh, what Red Skull, I guess. That guy was very much opposed to. You, you go waving. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he didn't. Uh, he didn't like the Red Skull thing. No, and they left it open, you know, at the end of that movie for him to come back, which obviously the character does. But he basically said, I'm not I mean, I signed a contract for several movies. I'm not doing another one. I don't think they're going to try to make me if I don't <laughs> want to. wonder why I uh, wonder why I didn't like it. He had a thing where he just didn't he didn't really care for the blockbuster movies. Like he, you know, he did all the Transformers movies and like he's just like, yeah, I'm just doing this for the cash. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Like he wanted to do like the smaller, artier sort of movies, and he was just doing the blockbusters to get money for it. I think. I mean, that's that's, uh, that's the dream of the artist, right? To have enough money to have enough fu money to basically say, I can just do the artsy films that I want to do now. Right. Pretty much. He did the Matrix. He did Lord of the Rings. He can just go off and. Yeah, that's yeah. why Daniel Radcliffe does weird shit now because he's just like, ah, eh, I can do whatever I want. Well, yeah, exactly. He's off. He probably make enough money off of you know like. Harry Potter for the rest of his life. To, I mean, uh, not just the yeah, movies. Right. I mean, the the rides, the merchandise. I bet they got a piece mm, of all that. Yep. Fat money yep. cake. Fat money cake. Anyway, back to the thing. Hugo Weaving as Mr. Suit is uh, uh, not where we started. It was Jeff Bridges, but still, uh, he could do it. Yeah. I like uh-huh. it. And I like, apparently, Mr. Suit was over or was uh, was listening to this conversation. He's like, hey, did I hear that uh, your old buddy has already located your base of operations? Your previous one? And Miles was like, it was it was going to happen. Men got captured. Somebody was going to talk. It was just a matter of time. And Mr. Suit has a whole kind of monologue where he's like, look, I like you. You're good at what you do. I like the, uh, you know, the approach you take with your work. You believe in this stuff. And I, I like your goal. I like you as a leader. But uh, this crap that went down is threatening to undermine my confidence in that assessment. And uh, he's just like, look, you lost your temper. And therefore lost control of your men, and that is why this disaster occurred. Which may be true. I don't know if Wax would have let both Marisai and Steris be taken without fighting back. It seemed like maybe he was going to until the guy got shot. So maybe it is all Miles' fault for losing his temper and shooting the guy in the head. And apparently this whole Vanishers deal, Mr. Suit's not a big fan of that either. He's like, why all the like all the drama is not necessary. You just insist on being all mysterious. And Miles is like, look, I told you, the drama serves a purpose. As long as the police don't understand what's going on, they will make mistakes. What he doesn't explain is that his 
additional reasons are he may he wants the public to be interested to to actually maybe even be rooting for these guys because they're so mysterious and amazing mystery power a pinch of magic that could work wonders for his cause what is it batman says it's like uh, you know in order to be um i need to become a symbol not just a man yeah that, that kind of fits i mean in this case if he's trying to be a symbol it's of robbing people which i don't know is is gonna get people on your side that much but maybe maybe he knows what he's doing and mr suits just like do you guys do you and wax have some sort of or waxillium do you have some sort of grudge that i need to be aware of something that maybe would have caused you to try to pick a fight with him at this party and miles retorts he's like i don't have a grudge against waxillium later and he's one of the finest men this world has known a finer man than you or i or practically anyone else in this city and suits so like oh, that's supposed to make me feel better like so you won't fight him he's like oh no i'll fight him i'll kill him if i have to he's on the wrong side he abandoned his right to protection the moment he returned to the city and started mingling with them, the rich people. And Suits like, I'm rich too, you know. <laughs> FYI. Like, uh, you know that I'm like right here, right? Like, uh, kind of making me nervous, bro. And Miles is like, no, I work with what I have. Besides, you have other things recommending you, especially since you did renounce your claim to privilege. And he says, no, not to privilege, merely to title. And he says he shot Pateras. Because he was an imposter, someone who pretended to seek ju- justice while pandering to the elite and the corrupt. In the end, they let him come play at their parties like a favored dog. I put him down. I don't, that metaphor really, uh, I guess it's a simile, actually, but I like how he plays it out. Well, between this and what he says on the train later, it's like, Miles has a thing for dogs. I guess and, you're like, right. Yeah. Not being associated with them. <laughs> that's, like a a, that's like a cl- that's like a classic Western thing, I feel like. They're always like, I'm going to put you down like a dog. Like a dirty dog. Yeah, I guess. Also, dogs are cool. I almost got a new dog today. but uh, that's right. I don't know. Yeah, there was this really cute dog at the shelter, but it's an adult dog, and the breed um, it can be aggressive if you didn't train it right. And since I don't know how it was trained, I don't really know enough about the dog to try to take it home but mm. very pretty dog an akita i don't know that one no, I have to look this it, up. it's uh it's kind of like a shiba inu but bigger they're both like japanese dogs oh yeah okay i've seen that yeah she was very, very pretty um she wasn't quite as big as like i guess a male would be but she was very pretty but just didn't know enough about her to bring her into the home mm. <laughs> so mr suit has decided that they're going to be robbing the new unrobable freight car that we saw advertised in the, the broadsheet page. And Miles says, well, it's going to take time to, and cuts him off. Like, no, I've had people working on this for some time. Your job is not the planning, Miles. Your job is the execution. I will see that you have your resources. Damn, just put him in his place. They're still holding the latest captive, a.k.a. Steris. What do you want done with her? And Suits like, uh, yeah, we'll figure it out. If I'd been paying closer attention, I would have removed that one from the list. Waxillium will not stop seeking her. It would have been so much easier if the explosion had worked. Now we must contemplate more direct action. So in case there was any doubt, these guys are behind the explosion that tried to take him out. Yeah. The butler wasn't just mad. <laughs> Talk smack about my tea, will you? <laughs> and yeah, I like goes, the mad version of the story better. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm so disgruntled to die. <laughs> Miles says, I'll deal with him personally today that was a very dramatic thing i don't know did you what did, did you guys expect uh from that like what the level of drama that we saw in this confrontation i mean i think we've point i think it's been pointed out on book this this guy's dramatic it's true he's, he's dramatic like, i'll take him out with both hands he's dramatic but he also doesn't fuck around mm. it's like he does yeah. he does say what he means it's like i'll do with him today you think all right we'll probably see you like you know, tonight at some point. And then, no, literally like an hour later, he's like, right here, bitches. <laughs> yeah, it's like he just turned around and went out and found the train that he was on somehow. Like, I don't even... That's impressive. And also, yeah, like, like, planned to somehow chain up all the other passengers. Like, that's a, that's a lot of quick uh, forethought. Yeah, no I joke. guess, though, if he's talking to the beggars and the beggars know where they've gone. Mm. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. I'll the do beggar. it personally. We'll give him the clamps. 
<laughs> we cut to Wax and Wayne explaining to Marisai all about Miles Degauter Degauter Miles Hundred Lives. Um, Miles per hour. <laughs> yeah, Miles per hour, exactly. Tails. <laughs> a particularly dangerous variety of twinborn, double gold. And Marisai's like, well, gold alamancers aren't particularly dangerous from what I've read. And Wax is like, no, but it's the compounding that makes it. And we talked about this, so we don't have to go into it too much. But it's like, he, he says, if Al- if your Alamancy and Ferrochemy share a metal, you can access its power tenfold. You store an attribute and then burn it to release the power. It's called compounding. And the le- by the legends, it's the way the sliver gained immortality. And she's like, oh, I thought, like, all the stories about his healing was just an exaggeration. But no, he, he is. He doesn't really have a hundred lives. <laughs> More than that, I guess. But uh, yeah. yeah. I think a better name would have been like Miles the Invincible or something, or Invulnerable. I don't. I don't feel like uh, Hundred Lives really makes sense. I like Miles Hundred Lives, the name, except for like I mentioned last time that it always reminds knives, me of knives, yeah. millions of knives. I, yeah. No, I, I, I think it sounds cool. Like there's another guy called John Deadfinger, and like I don't mm. know what that means, but like Deadfinger and Hundred Lives seem to go hand in hand pretty well. They both roll off the tongue. I mean, Silly Dead Finger gosh, right? sounds pretty straightforward. He's got one finger that's black and dead. Frostbite, uh, you see. I thought it was maybe, you know, like his trigger finger is so amazing trigger that finger. It makes people dead. Yeah, that's mm. what I thought. I like mine better that he has one black <laughs> finger. <laughs> He's actually Gross an accountant. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he I guess... In the background. I guess there's... And every time he kills somebody, he's like, I guess there's no accounting for taste. <laughs> Well, like that movie Ben Aff- with Ben Affleck, the accountant. Yeah, and then he kills another person. And he's like calculator. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> that's, wow. that's that's horrifying. Um, but no, I, I, I you calculator a obligator. Name. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, you got you got everyone needs a cool nickname when you're a lockkeeper out in the roughs. John Deadfinger, Miles Hundred Lives, Waxillium Dawn Shot. I wonder if Lessie had a cool name. Wayne does have a nickname that's mentioned, I think, once ever. And uh, when we get there, you won't be impressed by it. Aww. I'm not shocked by this revelation. <laughs> I, feel, I feel like that's just Wayne's lot in life. Wayne right? Lucky Hat. <laughs> I'd go for that. That I, it's a cool <laughs> name. But uh, so basically, he's a blood maker like Wayne, except he never runs out of health, as Wayne describes it. And I think he must be exaggerating a little bit here because uh, they tr- they try to explain because Marisai is not a ferrochemist. So they're like, look, with ferrochemy, it's all about storing up stuff and you have to be kind of sparing. Uh, it takes months to store up health or weight. Wayne's he says that uh, Wayne says that he'll have he's storing as much health as he can as they're going around. And by the end of the day, he'll barely have enough to heal a scratch. I think that's probably overstating it a little bit, but. It's tough to store up stuff, is uh, the the upshot. But Miles has n- almost infinite healing ability. Heard that he once took a shotgun blast to the face from point-blank range and walked away. And so at one time, the three of them, Wax, Miles, and John Deadfinger, had an alliance going on during the good years. John apparently is the lawkeeper in Far Dorist. I think we've heard that before. And Wayne's like, yeah, those guys don't like me a whole lot. Which makes sense, given that he should have been executed for killing a guy. And I like Wax's description that they respected one another, mostly from a distance. And Wayne has a very, what I think is a very cool line, where he's like, the first law of the roughs. The more alone you are, the more you need a man you can trust at your side. That's that's a cool uh, little motto to have. Yeah. And Marisai's like, well, he didn't sound like the guy, the kind of person to take up a life of crime. And Wax is like, no, but I'm pretty sure that's, uh, that's him. I heard his voice, and these cigars are his favorites. So, and Wayne's like, I'm not surprised. You ever hear about how, how he talked about the folks in Ellendale? And uh, basically, Wax is like, this whole thing has become way more dangerous. Uh, I kind of want to figure out where, where's a safe place that I can stash you, Marisai, because they're looking for you still. And she's like, What? You want to get rid of me? You don't love me? Her voice softened in a <laughs> pitiful kind of betrayed way. That's. <laughs> So descriptive. Like, I totally get exactly what he's saying. <laughs> and she's like, I thought I was being of help. And he's like, well, you are, but you don't have a lot of experience. It's like, well, you got to get experience somehow. Like, this isn't like an entry level job where you're like, you know, I got to get some experience. This is people shooting you to death. Now, I yeah. see in your resume, you have only been shot twice. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we need people to be shot a minimum of five times. 
Yeah. Or at least shot at a minimum of five times. <laughs> she's she's arguing that the safest place to be is near you. And Wayne's like, I, usually I find the safest place to be is anywhere but near Wax. Have I mentioned the <laughs> likelihood of explosions? It's true. I like how later she's like, you deserve to be exploded every once in a while. <laughs> yes. Just like, wow. That's <laughs> messed so up. Mean. So, hey, Miles is the one who heals, not me. Yeah. Wayne also heals. Just slowly. Yeah, not not as well. Yeah. And Wax is like, okay, fine. You're gonna you're gonna stay with us. I want to know what kind of alamancer you are. And Wayne's like, wait, what? And Wax has spotted uh, several things. You carry a patch of pouch of metal shavings in your handbag. You always keep it close. You don't know ferrochemy, but you do know alamancy. And you weren't surprised when Wayne stopped time in a bubble around us. So you can tell just from that, it's like he's already got an idea about what she might be. Her familiarity with speed bubbles kind of narrows it down. And Wayne is like, I'm surprised and a little disappointed that Wax didn't figure this out earlier. I would have expected him to put it together the first time he met you. Says the guy who didn't even know, like, put together she was an Alamancer. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) He's not the one who does the thinking. I'm sorry. That's what he has Wax for. Did I just cut you off saying the exact same thing? Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Great minds. Uh, and she says that her power is not very useful, especially compared to when she saw Wayne use his slider ability, which I think in the last episode I misstated. Somebody asked what Wayne's was called, and I said skimmer, but that's what Wax's ferrochemy power is called, is the skimmer. Wayne is a slider, whereas Marisai is a you, pulser. You, so Wayne's from that weird 90s TV show with John <laughs> Reese davies I was thinking like the little hamburgers, but yeah, okay. Mm, yeah, oh, I, was yeah. Thinking, I was thinking he was talking about how, you know, sliding into somebody's dms like he's good at that or something <laughs> i could see wayne you know being good at that all sure. of the above he's he's got a quip or two <laughs> and so marisai can slow down time around herself so while she sits still time around her is passing much more quickly which she's like not really useful <laughs> My father was ashamed of my power, told me to keep it quiet, much like my parentage. And Wax is like, your father is someone I am increasingly certain is a fool. Fair you point. have access. Yeah. Well, you have access to something useful. No, it won't fit every situation, but not no tool does. And a, a, a pretzel seller, a merchant comes uh, comes down and Wayne jumps up to grab a pretzel because he was talking about how hungry he was. Yeah, he was prepared to buy every Mars bar she had, but she didn't have Mars <laughs> bars. <laughs> but I, like Marisai points out, it's like, well, I mean, how can I use my power in a fight? I would be standing there looking like an idiot while everyone around me moved super fast. So I don't know. He says, like, look, it's a tool. It's not going to work in every situation. No tool is good for every situation, but you have useful power. Can you guys picture a situation other than what I guess they mentioned about being impatient for something? But uh can you guys picture a situation um, where this is a useful tool? Yeah, imagine you're at a dinner party with some people you really don't want to be there with and you want to get it over with as soon as possible. <laughs> Boom, done. <laughs> sure, but they're going to notice that you're missing. Yeah. Or you're just like in your seat and everyone's like, why is she sitting there not saying anything for hours? <laughs> this is weird. She's got like a glazed yeah, look on it, her face. She could do... So hang on, she slows down. But everything else continues on. Yeah. Yeah. He slows down, but everything. Yeah, I don't know. It's definitely not as useful as having a speed bubble. It would give you, it gives you less time to do something. Yeah. So like mm. a, a minute could pass for you, and an hour passes for everyone else. So. Yeah. I guess if you were like trying to be a statue. <laughs> <laughs> you got like you're on the street. You got one of those hats laid out there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, the only thing I could think of is what they mentioned. It's like if you want an event to come faster or the day to go by faster from your perception, just do that. But that's the only uh, thing I could find it useful for. It's like I'm hungry now. I've just put a roast in the oven. It's going to take an hour. Well, I'm just going to sit on the couch for a minute. And hey, the roast is done. Yeah. <laughs> you could time travel, but it'd be like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm crappy kind of time travel where everyone you right. dies and you end up a hundred years in the future. <laughs> yeah. So that's really the only thing I could, that's another thought I was just having, like, so is she much younger than she actually is based on how much she's used it? Mm. 
Who knows if she's even used it much? Apparently, she doesn't think it's good for anything. Right, but you know what I mean. I, I have the same thoughts about. We talked about this before, but like the time travel stuff in Harry Potter, it's like she used it for the whole school year. Is she is she a lot older now than she was right. before? Or, yeah. You know. So they take a carriage out to some train tracks, and Wayne uh, compliments the guy's hat, the carriage driver's hat. Stiff felt, conical, with a flat top and a feather on it. And he's like, oh yeah, this is a, a uniform hat. We we all wear one of these. And he goes, want to trade? What, trade hats? And so he's got like the, the, the like paper boy cap that he took somewhere or got somewhere earlier on. We didn't actually see where. And he wants to trade the guy for it. And the guy's like, well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'll throw in the pretzel. He says, fishing it out of his pocket. But they've just paid him a lot of money for bringing them here and for waiting for them. So he's like, I mean, I guess you can just have it. I'll just buy another one. Not a terribly good fit, but uh, mm. as as we find out soon, he just w- wants to re- keep reminding Wax that he owes him a hat. So they're in the outer estates. It's not the roughs that's all icky and dirty, and it's not the city that's super densely populated. This is just space probably you know stuff grows out here there's grass there's train tracks there's probably not a whole lot going on the kind of place where a man worked in the field during the day and then went home and sat on his porch drinking lemonade and petting his dog then died of boredom in places like that but this is the location of the last railway robbery so wax wants to take a look and meanwhile wayne is working on his pretzel guy accent like what's (laughs) What what was that, sir? What was that, sir? What was that, sir? <laughs> Never know when you're gonna need to imitate a pretzel guy. And Wax is like, what are you babbling about? He's like, I'm practicing my pretzel guy. He had a great accent. Must be from one of those new rim tents. <laughs> Wasing to the time of. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Shit! Now we've got the time travel loop. Yeah, wasing with the pretzel. No. But Wax notes that the train tracks get real close to the canal here, and Marisai retorts that, well, the rail lines all run parallel to the canals, or mostly anyway. The canals are here first, and that's I, that's probably what they ship stuff on before they cr- created a railroad, so they just ran the lines right along those same. Makes sense. Yeah. But he's like, well, but it gets real close here, like, more close than usual. And so Marisai's like, so you think that they're using, like, a machine that maybe can't go far from the the canal? And they start discussing the same problem we've been discussing since we found out about them. How are the Vanishers managing to get all the stuff out of the car so quickly? Speed bubble. And he's like, well, I mean, that could help. But to move that much stuff that fast, even if you, like, did a bunch of speed bubbles, you'd be using way more money in Bendeloy than you would get from the robbery. And uh, as Wax is investigating, Mary says, like, that hat really does not fit you well, Wayne. And this is where he's like, yeah, I just got to keep reminding Wax he owes me one. (laughs) But his logic has now gone far enough as to be like, it's actually okay because if I had I had to lose the hat because if I didn't lose the hat, it would have gotten blown up at the same time as my dusters. So it's actually lucky for the hat. Yeah. (laughs) That it got stolen. She's like, you're a very unique individual, Wayne. And he says, well, technically we all are, except for twins, I guess. Anyway, <laughs> and this is what's an into- awesome discussion, right? Wayne just thinks on a different level. I liked, really uh, does. I liked earlier when people like they were saying, oh, we're hungry. Uh, he's talking about how he's hungry and someone else gone. Oh, I'm coming with you. That is that. And he just goes, yeah, and I'm hungry. Fat is fat. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, his, his, his brain operates in a very in a very unique way. Yep. And they get into a, they get distracted by, he's like, I want to ask you a personal question. And she's like, how personal? And we get sidetracked a long way from the question that he was actually going to ask. Where she's like, you mean like you and me? And he's like, oh, no, 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 no. You're pretty enough, particularly through the coppers, if you know what I mean. And she's like, I, I don't know what you, what? Yeah. What word does that with, even mean? Word with a lot of curves in it, like you. <laughs> Pretty accent, too, and some nice bounce in the cloud area. And here's where we get into what Joe was talking about his wife was reading. Yeah. She uh, she did not appreciate this. And I said, <laughs> well, you know, I'm not saying it. It's just the character in the book. 
Well, and on top of that, it's like, Wayne who's uh, just a little like, yeah. But this is her she, first experience with Wayne, not having had the background that we have, you know, out of context. She's like, what the, what is wrong with this guy? She's like, what kind of smut do you guys talk about on your podcast? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. She's like, there's a lady on this podcast with you guys? Really? <laughs> it's all dinosaur erotica and... Uh, oh, talk, uh, no, 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 no. You could pay me a million dollars. <laughs> and I would not subject myself to such disaster. Uh, so Wayne says that uh, he prefers a woman who could take my face clean off with a good roundhouse. And she goes, do you, do you prefer a woman who can beat you up? And he goes, yeah, it's a thing. Anyway, uh, I was talking about allomancy. We have opposite powers. I speed up time, you slow it down. What happens if we both use it at the same time? And she goes, oh, yeah, that's been documented. Nothing happens. Cancels, cancels each other out. Which she says is about the most expensive nothing a person could find, given how rare both of these metals are. And she goes, my power's already pretty good at doing nothing. I didn't understand how pathetic it was until I saw what you could do. Anytime I use my ability, I'm left frozen in place looking stupid while everyone else is able to run about. <laughs> Man, we got a real negative Nelly on our hands, don't we? We do, but apparently her, her dad has been telling her that she and her power are lame since as long as she's been alive. <laughs> He's been using that, that parlance, too. He's like, your powers are lame. <laughs> <laughs> my powers are who I am, Dad. Yeah. You just don't understand the art of slow motion. And uh, he's like, well, but I mean, if you want something to come real badly, you can burn some chromium and poof, there it is. And she goes, yeah, I've done that before. And she says she can make her bubble the size of a small room. And he goes, well, that's way bigger than mine. To which she replies, well, you multiply zero by a thousand and you still get zero. And he goes, you do? <laughs> but uh, I think that that has brought up a question for me. And I don't know if anyone's ever asked it, but so their powers cancel each other out, but she can make hers way bigger. So if they're standing in the same place and she makes a big one and he makes a small bubble, is it like regular time in the middle and regular time outside, but like slow time in like a bubble in the middle of the two? Mm. I feel like if we've learned anything, it's not going to do nothing. So something. Interesting point. Interesting point. What if when they cancel each other out, what if he's what if he's speed bubbling in the middle? She's doing her slow mo thing on the outside. And then um, she drops her slow-mo, and then all of a sudden they're sped up real fast. Does that cause, like, vomiting? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> like a whiplash effect? Yeah, no, I, that's, I don't know. I will, not now, I'm just thinking about motion sickness from, from speed bubbles. <laughs> sure. But no, one thing uh, that I have seen that people have asked Brandon about is what happens if, like, multiple people who can burn like Wayne does to, you know, speed time up. If you like, you burn inside of one and apparently it, it like multiplies, like you go way, way faster as more people are burning inside. So compounds. Yeah. I, yeah and yeah, more or less. And so there've been theories that that will somehow be involved in like future space travel to travel long distances. Somehow you'll use like these bubbles. Speed of light travel. Interesting. But anyway. Engage, engage the hyperdrive, and it's just this one grumpy-looking dude standing on the deck. It's kind of fine. <laughs> makes, yeah. it, makes a bubble. That's actually what <laughs> that's actually what they were doing on Elantris when one of the Blood Knights would kill themselves to get to send somebody somewhere. They were just vibrating their body at faster-than-light speeds with some <laughs> kind of speed bubble, and then it, it like destroys their body in the process. That would suck. That yeah, would that suck. Would get- Nothing good happened to those guys. Everything sucked. You had to kill lots of people to get any of those powers. Kind of like hemallergy, as we discussed. But but I like, so we going back to the multiply by zero, and she's like, yeah, it's basic mathematics. And he's like, I thought we were talking about allomancy. Like, when did it become about math? And that made her blush, too. You expected that out of a girl when you talked about her more attractive body parts, but not when you mentioned mathematics. Um, she really does blush all the time. <laughs> All the time. I like later on when we find out about how uh, the anatomy class she attended. She's like, yes, apparently it was a popular class to watch my reactions in. Okay, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> uh, entertainment. Free entertainment in anatomy class. And here's Wayne thinking, like, I got to find a new a new love interest would help wax so much. We're going to have to figure out how to get this going. It's always so weird to me when, like, people try and do that. Oh, you just need to find another girl. And it's like, you, you know, it's like. The, the, their old girlfriend who died is not just a goldfish where you can get a new one. Right. 
It doesn't look like that. It's very, very strange. So, yeah, when somebody's like, yeah, get back up on the horse. Come on. I know you accidentally killed your, your girlfriend or wife or whatever, but let's let's give it another shot. There is a lot to unpack in what happened in that situation. Like, yeah. I mean, I guess it does make, sort of make sense for Wayne because he's not exactly the brightest. I mean, no, he's, he's, he, he is very smart, but of a different sort. So he's like, doesn't seem in tune to like, oh, yeah, you know, you just need another girl. I'm like, Wayne, come on, dude. He is very smart in some ways uh, about accents and things. It makes me think he would he would be a really great like maybe movie star where uh, you know you'd be really good at the acting thing and then kind of oblivious to a lot of uh, regular life stuff. But it's okay because you're making tons of money. You can pay somebody else to worry about it. Yeah, sure. But Wax finds uh, a deep impression, rectangular from something mechanical, and not enough footprints to indicate that a lot of people were walking around here. Marissa is like, I think you're right. If a robbery happened here, a machine could have remained in the canal and still reached the tracks. So that gives us a little more information about how this is happening, although still not enough to help us figure it out, I don't think. I don't know, any theories? Not really. No, I still got nothing. And so we cut back. They're back on a train. Wax is, uh, has gone to the bathroom on the train. He's washing his hands and thinking, what is Miles going to do now? He's careful. Judicious. He spent months between stealing the aluminum and making the next robbery. Now he's lost all these guys and all these resources. He's going to have to hide, but where? And this is not great because if these women really are being kidnapped for the reason that Marisai thinks they're being kidnapped, then waiting, if we can't find him because he's hiding, then that is very bad for these women. And then Wax goes, no, wait, he's going to need another heist. He has to get more aluminum. Because judging from how much aluminum we took off of them versus how much was stolen, he can't have much left. So th- we have one more opportunity to catch him. And that's when there's a scream and Wax almost gets shot. He throws himself to the side just in time. And he realizes that he has made a mistake in his assumptions here. An ordinary criminal would have hidden. But Miles, the lawman, is accustomed to hunting, not to being hunted. So if you mess up his plans, he comes looking for you. Dun, dun, dun. And then we get another page of broadsheet. Let's let's take a quick look at this and see what interesting stuff is in this one. Union leader abandons solidarity with trade party union members, which there's even a fun little uh, political cartoon to go with. Yeah. <laughs> There is an advertisement for a new soothing parlor. Feltry proven to be a rioter. So there's a a candidate for the canal worker's second seat that uh, they found out is an Alamancer. A former mistress has come forward to expose him. So I guess maybe people are going to think that he's been rioting them to get their votes and they won't like him anymore. I don't know. Alamancers for hire. People renting out coin shots and pewter arms for industrial work or protection. Temporal alamancers for time manipulation. Some ferrochemists with advanced warning. Uh, I'm sorry, you just missed out. Soothers and writers for dinner party amusement. Like parties, yep. Dinner party amusement, yep, sure enough. <laughs> I don't, uh, I, I, I don't know. Okay. It's like, yeah, yeah look, hiring, it's like we're bodyguards, we're hiring uh, people who can manipulate time, and we also need clowns. Yeah. Yeah. We need people to make us feel sexy. Uh, we got a gun advertisement. Emmerling makes a coin shot from a common man. That's kind of a good uh, a good uh, slogan, actually. In this yeah, that's world. cool. And then we have an excerpt from Exploring the Pits of Altania, which just a, a few paragraphs here, but it's kind of... We're going to learn more about Alamancer Jack in the pits later, so I won't read into that, but it's... Uh, a fun little bit. So I don't think there's anything groundbreaking in this one, but uh, I, I really love that uh, that he's included these things in this book, these little bits of newspaper. Yeah, a bit of fun. Yeah. So we cut back to Wax, who is uh, getting shot at. Miles fires three times in quick succession as he tries to get out of the way. And Wax is like, you can hear children crying nearby. And he's like, I can't risk innocent bystanders getting hurt. I got to get out of here. And that is why he... Jumps up out from between the cars and ends up on the roof. 
and he's like, oh, crap, Miles is here. Miles is on the train. This is bad. But this is also my opportunity to stop him right now. But how do you stop Miles 100 lives? I don't know. Anybody have theories about good ways to uh, to stop a guy who can heal from anything? Uh, like I said, make him drag. Maybe that'll blow him up. But get all his gold off him somehow. Yeah, run him out of gold. Yeah. And uh, like something that always comes up in the X-Men comics, it's like, you know, you can kill Wolverine by drowning him. Mm. Like, doesn't matter how like how much a man can heal if he doesn't have any oxygen in his head. Like a healing factor is not going to just magically make more of it. Good call. In my opinion, I, I don't think you need to even kill him. You just have like five guys tackle him and tie him up or something. Yeah, that's it. It's like he yeah he's immortal. That doesn't mean he is unstoppable. He's like you can just you know, yeah clock him. Like if if you're able to pin him down and then get him somewhere where he can't move, it's like well we'll just tie him to a chair. Put him in a cell. Heal your way out of that. Well, it's like, but that's 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 the other thing though. It's like, all right, you put him, you tie him to a chair, and then just leave him there. He can't get any more gold. Sooner or later, he will run out because it's, True. it's finite. Mm-hmm. So maybe you just, you know, like the prison guard is just sitting in like at the front one day, and all of a sudden he just hears a bang from Miles' cell opens up, and he's <laughs> he's exploded. Yeah. Oh, who's gonna clean this? <laughs> Make him a pair of cement shoes so he sleeps with the fishes. And so Miles is still wearing a mask at this point. He sees him pop up and uh, still masked and holding a a big old gun. Miles had always preferred firepower to accuracy, saying he'd rather miss a few times knowing when he did hit, the person wouldn't be getting back up. Okay. <laughs> that's one way, I guess. I, I guess that, that makes sense for a man who can afford to get shot himself. That's also true, yeah. True. You can walk right up to the guy and just shoot him, and no matter how many times, they're going to shoot you back. Yeah. Okay, uh, Wax is firing. And Wax, of course, is uh, very accurate. So Miles pokes his head out, and Wax fires a bullet, pushing it forward with some extra speed, nailing him right in the left eye socket. Ouch. <laughs> and then he shoots again and hits him in the forehead. And that's when he rips off his mask and uh, reveals his hawk like face with short black hair and prominent eyebrows. Interesting note. His eye grew back, the head wound was gone, and an eye blink, and you can see the metal mines on his arms are spikes that have been driven through the skin of his lower arm, so that it can't be touched with steel. Yeah. Cute. Yeah, I mean, no one's going to take your gold away to stop you from healing yourself if they're shoved <laughs> through your arms. All right, we've got him tied up. Now what do we do? Get the claw hammer. <laughs> Get the clamps. <laughs> <laughs> That's the solution. That's how we're going to defeat Miles. Yep. <laughs> The clamps. Clamp, yep. clamp, clamp, clamp. I could. There we go. <laughs> um, uh, and so, yeah, my, he keeps hitting Miles and it's not doing anything. And Miles keeps shooting at him and not hitting him. So they're kind of at a draw almost. But he's like, how do you fight someone who's basically immortal? It's uh, it's not easy. And so Wax shoots him in the gun hand, causing Miles to drop his gun, which then bounces off the roof and disappears over the side. And that just irritates Miles, who jumps at him, cracks his head into the metal, uh, cracks Wax's head into the metal of the train. And Wax is like, ah, idiot. Most men wouldn't have jumped like that. They wouldn't risk killing us both by throwing us off a moving train. But Miles doesn't care. Uh, he gives, shoots him again in the gut. Doesn't help. Meanwhile, Miles is punching him. And uh, that, you know. It has an effect. Wax can't uh, heal himself, so getting hit a bunch doesn't feel good. And there's it's really, it's like, you can rip the tendons in my foot, Wax, but they'll re it immediately. I think your body will give out before mine does. Push harder, let's see what happens. Which, damn. All right. And there's and then Wax tries to get Miles in a headlock, which maybe that's the idea, is uh, choke him out, cut off his oxygen. Kind of the equivalent of drowning, but... Yep. Miles keeps punching him, punching him. Wax increases his weight, which throws him off. Miles pulls out his other gun from his other holster, also aluminum. The first gun was aluminum. This gun's aluminum. It's a very expensive fight. <laughs> Miles don't fuck around. Yeah, right. We spared no expense. <laughs> <laughs> he hits Miles in the kneecap, making the next shot go wild, and then shoots him in the hand again, making him drop another gun. And Miles is like, damn it, do you know how much those things are worth? (laughs) And uh, this is where they actually get to chat a little bit. 
And Miles has this thing where he's like, I always wondered if I'd have to hunt you down, your softness would like make you go easy on someone, and then I'd have to take you out. Whereas Wax is like, what made you turn? Like, was it was it money? And he goes, you know this isn't about money. And Wax is like, I don't lie. You need gold. You've always needed it for your constant compounding. It's it's all very good for him to say this isn't about money, but he was just screaming about how much the guns he dropped cost. It's true, yeah. but I mean... Like, like half a page ago. Yeah. Even if you're not all that into money, if you if you just lost a thousand dollars worth of gun and then immediately, like a minute later, it happened again, you might be annoyed about it. Yeah, true, true. And uh, he's like, you used to be a good mo- lawkeeper, Miles. And he's like, I was a dog, a hound kept in line with false promises and stern orders. Don't tell me you didn't feel it. Working every day to fix the world, wax and never getting anywhere. And Wax like, well, yeah, that's what being a law keeper is like. There's always more crime, but that doesn't mean you join the other side. And this is where Miles makes his point. He's like, think about it. Where do the criminals come from? Was it the shopkeeper next door who starts murdering people or the boys who grew up near town working their father's dry farm? It was the people shipped out from the city, fortune hunters, fools. And here's where the uh, the definite or the not the definition, the title of the book comes from. Where Miles is like, I serve the law too, but now I serve something better. The essence of the law mixed with real justice, an alloy. The best parts of both made into one. The alloy of dun, law. Dun, dun. Yeah. Roll credits. Roll credits. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, so he's like, what about your your gr- great catch of the last five years? Pars the dead man. See, the, these are some cool nicknames, right? <laughs> I mean, some cool you nicknames. Know, but... crushed right there. Pars? <laughs> But uh, apparently this guy had been a butcher in the city and got caught killing beggars. So we got like a, almost maybe a Sweeney Todd thing going on. Was he making some meat pies or? Uh, well, to be fair, Sweeney Todd was only killing people that he wanted revenge on. So it's not really the same. That's fair. No, no. He killed a whole, like he, to make the pies. He just killed people who wouldn't be missed. Like he was building up to his revenge. But, but so, did you, uh, I don't remember that. Did you see is that in the play or just the film version? I'm pretty sure that was uh, that was that was in both. Um, like, I didn't remember that in the play. I only remember him killing like a, like three people, three or four people. Yeah, I don't know. Like definitely in the movie, there's like a montage of him like killing some people and sending him down the chute. So that yeah. because they had, to, they had to have enough people to put in the pies. Yeah, you're right. I I just uh, I just don't remember that. I mean, you can make you can make like twenty pies from one person. I was gonna say one guy will give you plenty of pie. But, yeah, you, uh, you get plenty of pie from one guy. <laughs> a conversation I never thought I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you got if you want to talk ratio of pies to man, I mean, you got at least you get at least ten ten fifteen pies from that bro. This is a unit of measurement that like has not come up. Like, how, how do you how do you convert this into pounds and kilos? How many pies? Yeah, that's a measurement I'd like to have on file. Also, a jaws like you know it's a twenty five footer, so it's like what are you talking about? It's like it's two jaws is long. <laughs> I've never seen the play or the movie, so I actually don't know anything about uh, Tweeny Todd. I'll have to read the summary later just to find out the the truth about this situation. Sure, but. Uh, Anyway, he's uh, he got caught killing beggars and fled to the roughs where apparently no one cared to follow him. Like, they're like, oh, whatever, we got rid of him. So left it to Wax to stop the guy when he starts killing again. They didn't stop him. They didn't send you any help. They didn't care about the roughs. Nobody cares about the roughs. They barely seem to notice us, save as a place to deposit their trash. He's, well, Miles is like, I do what needs to be done. That's the code of the lawkeeper. I haven't stopped being one. You never stop being one. You do what nobody else will and stand up for the downtrodden. And Wax is, basically, Wax was like, I'm not going to join you. You're not going to convince me of this. And he's like, well, I'm not asking you to join me. You've always been a good hound. If your master beats you, you just whimper and wonder how to serve better. I don't think we'd work well together. And so Wax thinks about taking off or kind of starts to. And Miles is like, yeah, go ahead and run. I'll just wander back and take little lady harms, the bastard and Wayne. I've been wanting an excuse to put a bullet in that man's head. I was going to say like for uh, some, something that was secret from wax about her being Lord harms daughter. Other people seem to know it, but I guess they would have had to, if they had her on the list of people to kidnap Mm, point. 
So maybe that's a hint is that, like somebody who knows uh, some secrets of uh, these high society folks is uh, behind this list. Or maybe everyone knows and Wax was just the only one out of the well, list. Well, I feel like uh, Mr. Suit, he's the one who sounds like he was the one who was like, I should have taken her off the list. So he probably mm. made the list. And he, yeah. I assume based on the fact simply that he's wearing a suit that he's like somebody within the nobility that is titleless that uh, has decided to do something for his own stuff so i guess we'll find out what that is hopefully mm. yeah makes sense so miles pulls now that he's lost both of his guns he pulls out a knife from his boot also made of aluminum and wax uh wax is like man i gotta get rid of this guy i gotta throw him off the train somehow I'm not going to beat him here. I need to like have a, a plan to beat this guy. And so Wax is going to try to shoot the knife out of Miles' hand as well, because that's been working real well for him so far. To prevent this, Miles takes the knife and rams it through his own forearm all the way through. So it's sticking out the bottom just to stop uh, Wax from being able to get rid of it. It's disturbing. And uh, so Wax gets out his own knife and they're going to have a knife fight. Got to practice his stabbing. <laughs> yes excellent and i like there's there's a moment where he wax thinks a man my age shouldn't be doing this kind of thing that's his like i'm getting too old for this shit moment <laughs> he's over 40 which was ancient by ruff's standards oh and this is i kind of skipped over the fact but he uh he gets knocked off the train and kind of manages you know to stop himself from dying and all because uh he can make himself so light and stuff that he kind of just doesn't hit real hard but yeah he's he's laying here on the ground after falling off the train and that's where he's like i'm too old for this shit but miles is right you never stop being a law keeper he can't leave miles to go and kill wayne or marisai or anyone else for that matter so he gets on the rails and he pushes and this is kind of like uh the the spike way back from the original mistborn except it's a rail so you can just push the whole way down very convenient i thought that was really cool especially because you've got the metal that runs the whole way mm-hmm would be a very effective way of transport. And he can go quick, so he manages to catch up to the speeding train pretty quick before Miles even gets back in the train. Like, Miles is on his way to, like, climb back down, spins around when Wax lands on the top of the train. And I guess Wax has had a moment to plan on his trip back to the train. He pulls out a cartridge and throws it at Miles, who, looking startled, snatches it out of midair. And Wax is like, bye, and pushes on the cartridge and throws Miles off the train. Throw Mama from the train. Yep. And then he says, no ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just like sits down like, ah, oh, geez, aching. He, he doesn't even get down from the top of the train until it finally stops at the next stop. And the engineer's like, I'm sorry, we had orders. Uh, we, we're, we, we don't stop for anything. Even when we heard gunfire in the passenger cars, the vanishers get you when you stop. And Wax is like, well, actually, it's good, because if you'd stopped, I would be dead. So he's thinking Miles will take probably an hour to run this far. <laughs> but he could find a horse, get here faster, who knows? And maybe yeah, he gets more stamina. Gold, like, like, get you here quicker now, bitch. Well, no, he does <laughs> think he's like, maybe the gold like makes gives him more stamina for running long distances. Who knows? Apparently, Wayne and Marisai were trapped in their train car by pieces of metal jammed into the locking mechanisms on the doors. So Miles really planned this out well, waited till Wax went to the bathroom, trapped everyone in the in the car so that nobody would come to help, and then went after Wax. So the train is stopped at the station, and they're still trying to get Marisai and Wayne out. Like, it jammed real good. And they've called a, a, a surgeon to come and help him with his gunshot wound, and he's like, no, I'm fine, it's, it's fine. And Marisai comes in, sees him shirtless, and he's like, oh my gosh. Embarrassed, look away. Are you are you all right? And Wayne's like, yeah, he'll live. What'd you do? Trip on your way out of the washroom? Miles found me. And Maris is like, is he dead? And he's like, well, I killed him a few more times. About as effective as what everyone else has tried. And here's where Wayne's like, you got to get his metal mines off him, just like you guys were talking about. And Wax says he keeps 30 different ones, all piercing his skin, all with enough healing to bring him back from any wound. <laughs> Wayne goes, so, sounds like a challenge. I guess I got to ask. So what we know of Alamancy is you have to actually ingest the metals. So is he just, like, constantly poking himself full of gold, like, pulling it out and then just swallowing it? Maybe. Maybe you just pull one out and swallow it, yeah. But, I mean, you, but, 
yeah, can you burn it if it's just like stuck in your arms? Does it have to be in you, but not necessarily in your digestive mm. system to be that's burned? A, that's a good question. That is a fair question. I feel like in the original trilogy, they make it clear, like you feel them in your stomach and you mm. burn them from your stomach. I feel like they make a point of that in that first book. That That is how everyone does it. That's not necessarily meaning that's the only way that it could be done. That's how everyone thinks it works, at least. But it's important to note that, yes, you know, you you compound, you might have to swallow it and burn it to, you know, get 10 times the energy of healing. But you can take all of that healing and then store it in a metal mine to access at a different time. True. So I don't think you have to, have to necessarily actively be burning to get the, the benefit of all that compounded health but I'm not 100% sure based on what they're saying here. And uh, this is where it says, from what Wax knew of compounding, it could be very dangerous to stop once you started. But then again, that's just him and like his limited knowledge, so we don't even know how accurate that is necessarily. And Marissa is like, let me see the wound. And uh, she's the, one of the guys is like, oh, you know something of surgery? And she says, I go to the university. And Wayne's like, and? University rules set by Harmony himself dictate a broad education. Well, yeah, I know they have to take girls. Ugh. Not the kind of broad I was talking about, Wayne. So everyone has to take general classes, including basic healing and a little bit of surgery, including anatomy courses, to be able to then choose a specialty. And that's when she's like, Wayne's like, wait, all parts of anatomy? Yes. So so it was a very popular class to watch my reactions, apparently. I'd rather not. <laughs> and I, I love, I almost every interaction with Wayne is just, is just amazing and fun. But I... So I can't stop saying, but I love it where she's like, I've never worked on someone alive before. And he's like, well, I spent months using dueling canes on dummies before beating up my first real person. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> and uh, she's looking at his scars and they're having that that uh, that dramatic moment that you get in these. Like there's that dre- there's a, a Dresden Files where it happens, but it's all over the place where it's like somebody's like, oh, my gosh, you have so many scars. You've been shot so many times. And uh, he's like, yeah, there's seven. <laughs> And he starts explaining. He's like, well, you know, you can survive gunshots. And she's like, no, no, I, I, what I mean is we only have records of five of them. You're going to have to tell me about the other two. <laughs> Yay. Uh, awkward much? And then she's like, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, no, that, not awkward at all. My bad. I really am impressed that you've been shot so often. <laughs> That's like, what I was going for when I was getting shot. <laughs> to impress all the ladies. Getting hit's not that impressive. It doesn't take much skill to get shot, Wayne says. It's uh, very true. You just kind of stand there and let it happen. <laughs> uh, and I, there's this moment where I really want to know. Wax says there's much worse things to be than genuine Marisai. Besides, Wayne wasn't much better when he was new to all this. He used to get so nervous he would start. And when he goes, hey, no use bringing that up. She goes, what? And he says, nothing in all caps. Come on, we got to move, right? <laughs> Mr. Miles Murder is still alive. He wants to shoot us, right? Let's go. Yeah, he got so nervous he would pee himself. Every that's, time. that's my first thought. Like, is that what it was? Uh, and he's like, look, wax is fine. I got like almost my whole back blown off earlier, if you will kindly recall. And I didn't hear nearly an ounce of the sympathy you're showing him. And this is where Marissa is like, that's different. What, because I can heal? No, because even after knowing you only a short time, I'm fairly certain on one level or another, you deserve to get blown up every now and then. Burn. My reaction is exactly Wayne's. It's like, wow, that's harsh. And Wax is like, but untrue. And Wayne says, oh, I didn't say that. (laughs) Keep moving, slow boy. A man gets shot and thinks he can have all afternoon. Let's move. And uh, we end the chapter with Wayne being like, we're going to need someplace safe to plan, right? And Wax is like, yeah, you're right. I don't know if I'd call any place near Renette safe, especially for you. But And Wayne goes, well, better than being exploded, mostly. And that's the end of the chapter. So it appears we're going off to meet Renette and to uh, find out why Wayne is so interested. So, predigments are next. What do you guys think we're coming to here? What is happening? We have three more episodes to record in this book, and then we are done. We're 66%, two-thirds of the way through the book. What do you guys think we have left here? So... All right, I'm standing by what I said before. I think Renette is related to Lessie in some way. But previously it indicated that she really hated Wax, but here, like, Wax says, no, she really hates Wayne. So I guess she probably, like, I still think she's related to Lessie somehow. So I think she probably blames them both for what happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Like, whether 
And uh, I'm wondering if, like, Wayne, like Wax was just so guilty over killing her that Wayne threw himself under the bus and said he he was the one who actually fired the shot, maybe, and just said, oh, you know how I am with guns, right? <laughs> uh, which did not help. So I feel like that's, yeah, she hates them both as a result of all that. Miles is going to, we're going to see what happens. They're leaning really heavily on like, what happens when you stop compounding, like we need to get his spikes out of him. So I think we will see that happen somehow. Don't quite know how. But yeah, maybe maybe they will catch him, tie him up, and just start pulling him out one by one and just seeing like he starts freaking out. Something goes wrong as it happens. Whether or not that kills him, I don't know, but mm-hmm. just enough to really shake him to the core. We are going to see Marisai and Wayne combine their powers at some point. And I think that's going to be the crux of the book. Don't, yeah, I don't know how it's like it's actually going to play out, but it has to happen at some point because why else would they bring it up? Yeah, I don't, I don't have too much. Uh, I feel like Mr. Suit, whoever he is, is really winding up for something big that's way out of Miles' scope. I feel like Miles either might die feel like feeling like shit what have i done or he's gonna do an about face and try and team up with like wax and wayne after just realized mr suit was just doing something completely counter to what he wants mm. um but okay but I, I, I don't know like we don't know enough about mr suit to really figure that out so yeah all sort of patchy this week but that's what i got yeah suit is very new on the scene here so i don't know that we have enough information to even try to other than the fact that I guess he's he wants these girls and Marisai has her theory about why. Yeah. I, yeah, when he popped up, I'm just like, is this a guy we've seen before? And I flipped back through some of the earlier, like, people we've met. It's like, has, have we seen someone with the same sort of description? But even his description is just like, oh, he's got a beard. Yeah. It's he, like, he yeah, has a nice suit and a beard. That's it. Yeah, and it's like, and people can change their suits, so that's no issue. I did at one point think, is it Lord Harms? But no, that dude had a moustache, so... Be weird for him to kidnap his two kids and then beg Wax to find them also. Uh, but that that might just like throw suspicion off him. That's true. But yeah, I, we we haven't really but, met that many people. Is the issue? Yeah. Hmm, yeah. Okay. Okay. Did we? I just I want to just check. Did we have it confirmed that Steris did not have an elementic power? Marisai said that she is, yeah, we're, we're taking her word for it. She's the only one who said, and she's like, I'm 100% sure she's not an elementor or a ferrochemist, but that's the mm. only source we have. Mm. Okay. I'll park that thought for a bit then. I, I I definitely think there is something to combining Wayne and Marisai's powers together. And I think, because I mean, you know, with Kelsey around the 11th medal, he was like, oh, nothing happened. So that was a bit, you know, fizzle out. Marisai is a bit the same. Ugh, mine's useless. But putting them together, I think maybe they'll be able to get the gold off Miles that way. Maybe there's a way that they can, like, you know, they haven't been able to perceive the effect yet, but maybe slow down time for him or speed up time for him while one of them has slowed up or done the other one <laughs> to get the, the, um, gold off him maybe i'm not sure if they'll be able to incapacitate him or or not because they can combine their abilities maybe someone else can also combine an ability with them as well or you know maybe i I think we have seen before like vin managed to just push really hard to get bracelets out of the lord ruler didn't he didn't she 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 did, but it was only after she, like, the mist came in and she absorbed the mist to help her or something. Mm. So yeah. maybe you could have a ferrochemical ability that you can compound to push them out. Mm, maybe okay. maybe someone else. We've, we've got another compounding metal twin-born person to meet. Yeah, I don't know. But I think there's definitely more to being able to put those powers together. It's not going to be as simple as just being nothing, but maybe a seed being planted there to get some ideas ticking on how we're going to solve the things with Miles. And yet Miles, obviously, like he is our you know, bad guy at the moment, but he appears to not be the ultimate bad guy with Mr. Suit coming on the scene. So perhaps we will see a resolution with Miles sooner rather than later and then Mr. Suit is our ultimate villain or perhaps Mr. Suit carries over to mm. the next book. 
maybe. Um, but yeah, that's kind of all I've got today. Yeah, I mean, it's I guess it's important to keep in mind that it's like when this book was written, it was there wasn't intended to be a next book, so maybe that changes your yeah, opinion on that. Yeah, true. But that okay. doesn't mean that he intended to wrap up every single thread and not leave anything left. So you know, you can go. Yeah. Those. Yeah. Hmm. So I I liked where Dak was going with the Renette stuff specifically. I I think though that maybe it's taking a different um different thing. I think she may still be Leslie's relative of some sort, but I think maybe Wayne tried to have like a romantic relationship with her or something and that's why she's specifically mad at him. And then she's probably mad at Wax just for the for the the death of her sister type thing, especially if she made the gun that shot her sister if they're sisters or if she made the gun that he used that that could be a lot of guilt there just in general so uh i kind of like that angle but i think it may be playing out slightly differently and then as far as miles i think the next confrontation with him is going to be the freight train heist i think uh wax is basically going to put a stop to it there they're gonna have another fight on a train yeah, pretty much. Or maybe on horses this time, because that would be different. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think there'll definitely be another confrontation there. And then um, it'd be kind of interesting for Mr. Suit to get away, but I, I think it makes more sense for us to know his identity. I think my, my um, predicament about his identity, is because he said that he, he... What is it? He didn't, he didn't renounce... Uh, like uh he didn't renounce like wealth or pleasure or whatever just title he 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 renounced his title not his privilege i think yeah title not privilege i almost wonder if he's like a clergyman of some sort oh because it's like you wouldn't like a clergyman may not necessarily have title but they would have certain privileges as clergy so i almost wonder if that's that's what he is and if so i'd be interested to know like maybe he's Maybe he's a sliver guy, and uh, he wants to like make. A, he wants to become a sliver uh, somehow mm. uh, by getting all these people together. Uh, maybe that's through hemolurgy. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I'm. I. I uh, or maybe he's like. Uh, maybe he's like super into death, and so he's uh, he's trying to make an iron eyes people again. You know, who knows. But uh, I think maybe that's that's the angle that it's coming from is clergy uh, possibly. I mean, super into death is an iron eyes. I thought you just meant he really likes likes death and nah. It's like oh, that's no. Okay. I meant like you know, because there's like I assume there's a religion based around the iron eyes death guy. We know sliverism. It says they revere old iron eyes himself or whatever. So maybe yeah, that's... so maybe that's a so yeah. If he's a sliver guy, it could be. And that may be why he appreciates Miles' cause. Cause it's like, yeah, you believe in something, that's good. And then he's like, I believe in something too. And when that comes to fruition, you're all doomed. <laughs> so yeah, I think maybe that's where this is heading. Interested to see the next, the last third, and see how this this all wraps up. I don't, I don't know why. And maybe this is just bad guy, uh, bad guy Joe reading the book and being like, eh, I don't really, I'm not into this. But I do not like the Marisai wax relationship. I don't think I don't know. It just seems kind of unhealthy. Yeah, um, you're not wrong. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm with you on that. That's not just bad guy Joe. That's yeah. I, I it just doesn't seem like a good foundation for a solid relationship because she kind of idolizes him at this point, and even if yep. he's becoming humanized right now, like they're still. I don't know. Feels kind of icky. Um, well, there's a big age gap also, and so she's like idolizing this like way older. Guy. It, it, it is a little yeah. Weird. It's a little icky. Um, so I'm not super into that. So I'm kind of hoping that it, they just become friends, and maybe she moves on to something else. Like, uh, you know, and it's it's kind of funny. There's there's been a lot of back and forth between them, and she obviously is annoyed by him but i almost would rather her like if she's gonna get with one of them i would rather it be wayne i guess hmm. um i think that would be more uh, more of an interesting dynamic as well not his type um, though apparently yeah apparently not his type he wants a lady who can 
give him a nice roundhouse kick to the face. She just takes some kickboxing classes or something. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so do that, I teach that at university? Yeah, Maybe. that opens up a whole nother can of worms. Like because he can heal, is he like, is he like turned on by pain? Like you know, like what is? Oh you know, God. You know what I mean? Like it's weird. I don't know. Yeah. So that opens a whole nother kind of weird door that we don't want to go down. But uh, yeah, that's that's those are my predicaments. Yes, that makes sense. There's a couple things that I want to pull up from the annotations just randomly here, and then I'm going to have one more question for y'all that I think is an interesting one. But so one of the things he says is that one of his big goals for these Mistborn books was to give people with more limited powers a chance to shine. So Mistings and their ferrochemical cousins, Fairings. So that's what it's called if you have one ferrochemical power, you are a Fairing. In the previous trilogy, there was really a big focus on the Mistborn. They were the badasses who did everything. But he wanted to show people with only one or two powers and how specialization could achieve achieve some really cool results because of how well you know, like, your one power. So stuff like Wax's Steel Bubble are tricks that Vin never would have learned because she didn't spend that much time with just steel, right? So that's kind of a cool note, I thought. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's definitely like necessity is the mother of invention here because, it, it, you know, Mistborns, while rare, uh, existed in enough abundance that people kind of relied on them for the main part of uh, the part of like protecting houses and things like that. And, you know, with these people that have specialties and they have specialties in more than one thing and they just have more access to knowledge because knowledge isn't being restricted by an overlord. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, it, it just kind of shows there's a lot of interesting things that can be done when people are allowed to kind of experiment and and figure things out. Uh, for this for this last chapter we read his his note says, yes, I had a fight atop a moving train. Don't judge me. I couldn't help myself. It fits so perfectly in the narrative. And I realize it's a bit stereotypical of a place for a fight sequence, but I really wanted to see it happen. So there you go. It's stereotypical because they're fun. Yeah. And I, I feel like I made this point before. There's a couple of like kind of cliche moments in these chapters, but I think they're good like things. So it works like it's not it's not like wedged in there. Yeah. You know, it's like it, it works for the story and it and it adds to it. It doesn't really detract so see okay this is the thing about cliches and stereotypes and everything else as long as you do them in a way that's enjoyable that doesn't mean they're a bad thing to right, have yeah, in exactly. the story but like, everyone's right. like oh that's such a stereotype yeah but was it still fun yeah then <laughs> awesome yeah uh, he goes on to say this is a rather cinematic book meaning i see it translating easily to film unfortunately i doubt that will ever happen not because i'm pessimistic about being films being made in the first place which i am but because this is essentially book four in a series, and beyond that, it's a very weird book four because it departs wildly from the previous trilogy and setting, and in some cases, tone, which means that it probably would never see film because you couldn't just start with a Wax and Wayne movie. The setting is too much of a mismatch. Magic and the Wild West plus urbanized early 1900s, but it's not on our world and has three books worth of mythology in the background of it, so that could work on paper, but you're not going to go up to a studio executive and have them say, oh, yeah, that sounds like a surefire hit. We'll fund it. So he's like, I think we can hope for the original trilogy getting to film. And maybe if they're like wildly successful, we could see something happening with these books. But he's not holding his breath. A man can dream, though. A yeah. man can dream. <laughs> Besides Wheel of Time, which isn't technically his property, just he worked with he did some of the later books. What um, is there anything that he has been involved with? like with his original writing that has been put on film or TV? Uh, not, I think that successfully made it to TV. There was, they were real close to making, he has a, a, a series of short stories called Legion. I mean, there's more specific titles, but that's the overall title. Right. And they were real close to make, like they, they were in the process of making that show or about ready to start when a new show came out based on like, a, I guess the comic book, called legion and it's yeah not, i remember when that show came out yeah it's not exactly the same thing but it's kind of a little bit similar to the point that they were like oh well this show came out it beat us by so much that there's no way we can make this show now mm. and i think that was the closest that we've heard about at least that they've gotten all of this right. stuff is like people have licensed it or whatever and bought the rights to it and so there's like a low-key stuff being worked on but nothing has actually like made it made it yet 
Yeah. Well, maybe with this giant <laughs> Kickstarter campaign kicking off the way it did, maybe that'll kind of draw more attention to him again. Yeah. There, and he said in some of his videos since then that there's there's a hope that people are interested. Although it's it's it, he was saying that like print media recognizes books a lot, and so like newspapers and magazines and stuff were calling him for interviews about the Kickstarter and really interested in this. Still, not a whole lot of heat from like TV networks because apparently. TV doesn't care about books. It doesn't make a lot of sense just because, I mean, just the fact that the Kickstarter is the highest funded mm-hmm. Kickstarter of all time. I mean, that's that's uh, newsworthy, like television newsworthy just in general because it's like a record. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like even even like local news, maybe in Utah or something should be like, you know, local author or as largest Kickstarter of all time. Like, I don't know. It just seems like, seems like they should be paying some kind of attention to it. 30, 30 million plus is no, you know, that's nothing to shake your head at and be like, nah, we got other more important things to talk about. I agree. But I don't know. I don't know what sells. Anyway, You're right. I don't yeah. Know. That's why we're not, you know, that's why we're not raking in big bucks. Not, not, <laughs> not specifically from the podcast, but you know, just in general in our in general, lives. Yeah, like, exactly. We don't know. We don't know what, yeah dinosaur well, erotica apparently, <laughs> apparently. No, just, uh, but the last note that i wanted to touch on is the working title for this book was just wax and wane i know i knew the title wouldn't stick because it's a pretty lame pun now i happen to be fond of lame puns but they don't belong in book titles unless you're writing xanth or bob aspirin type novels but he says i can't remember which name came first wax or wane I had wane as a character first but he had a different name Wax's name came out of the Mistborn ideal, where characters frequently had strange fantasy names, but they abbreviate to fun terms like Hammond and Ham or Dachshund and Dox, and Wax just fit in with those. Wayne, on the other hand, feels Western to me. And But once he discovered Wax and Wayne and this pun that he's like, will probably make people groan, I was like, I'm keep, I have to keep this. This is perfect. <laughs> it's better than the talking horse. <laughs> so I, mean, I thought that was a fun little note about how the names came out. And I, I don't think I'd twig to the fact that it's true. They People have in Mistborn have these weird names that shorten to stuff that sounds cool. Uh, okay, question that I had for you guys. Now that we have this primer on how compounding works, what do you think would be the coolest compounding power? So you're taking a ferrochemical storage, and I'll read those off to you, what ferrochem you can store, and you get basically an infinite amount, right? If you okay. if you share if you have the same metal for both of your alamancy and ferrochemy, so physical weight like wax does is one of them. Physical speed, physical strength that's the pewter one. Senses so uh, says stored like sight and hearing and stuff in different tin mines, but it was all this is general senses are tin. Zinc stores mental speed. Brass stores warmth. Copper stores memories. That was the says copper mines. I don't know how that would work compounding, actually. Like, I, don't, I have no clue. Bronze stores wakefulness, so you would never have to sleep, basically. Cadmium stores breath, so you could not have to breathe. Bendeloy stores energy, like calories and stuff. Gold stores health. Electrum stores determination. And then we start getting into what? weird ones. We start getting into very weird ones. Nigrosil stores investiture, duralumin stores connection, aluminum stores identity, and chromium stores fortune. So <laughs> those last ones those? are very strange. Yeah, and actually that becomes a uh, an important uh, plot point moving forward is the definition of some of those things. I mean, investiture, that's like becoming a shard? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, those so are all I, weird. I would probably ignore those last few when you're thinking about, but which one of the more no- ones that actually make sense do you think would be a cool, like, uh, compounder thing? I mean, the speed one Maybe sounds pretty cool. Right. Sorry, Jamie, you were kind of in the background. Sorry. Um, I was just saying that an obvious one would be strength. That would be very cool to have compounded. Mm, yeah. I do wonder how that would work, because we saw when Saze was, like, tapping strength, he became, like, this big, muscly dude. Like, he just got really big. How's that story if you have, like, infinite, like, how huge can you get? <laughs> now starring Godzilla. Yeah, basically, right? <laughs> uh, no, I think um, sorry, speed, speed speed would be incredible. It's like, all right, just dart here, there, everywhere. Yeah. Like, you know, like the basically, you're just, you're just Quicksilver, yeah. 
I, I can't help but think the bronze one storing wakefulness and never needing to sleep sounds horrific. Like, why would you <laughs> – like, sleep is incredible. Why, why would you never want that? Yeah. Yeah, but what if you didn't need it? Yeah, maybe you'd get more done if you didn't need sleep. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, if I have a baby, for sure. Actually, that would have been really helpful last night. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, just... maybe if you drag a little bit after, you can sleep for, like, a long time. That'd be nice to, like, just know your body's going to have to sleep. Mm. Mm. The Bendeloy one strikes me the same way, where it's like you're storing calories or whatever. It's like so you wouldn't need to eat, but I like eating. Like food is fun. Yeah. I don't want to not eat. Yeah, but I mean, I think also if you're storing calories, like you could maybe overhaul it, and it would give you like a ton of energy. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So you could you know keep going, even if you're tired. If you got tired, you could just you know pop it on and go go go. Right, so it's um, coffee, coffee in a in a metal. Yeah, I know you told us not to think about the last ones, but fortune to me sounds the most interesting because if it's just like good luck, yeah, like that sounds really cool. Kind of like it makes me think of Harry Potter and the Felix Felicis potion. It's like everything just works out for you. Like that just sounds pretty awesome. I absolutely had that same thought where it's like I'm going to the casinos. I'm compounding fortune. That sounds amazing. Yeah, I'm not sure that's what fortune actually means, but if it does, I agree. That's a really good one. Yeah. Personally, I think I like mental speed, like uh, just like supercharging your brain and be an interesting approach. I guess if you're not getting anything useful out of your brain in the first place, then making it go way faster <laughs> wouldn't get you anywhere. It's, it's a thousand times zero again. Yeah. But, uh, For Wayne, anyway. it wouldn't do much, right? Yeah. <laughs> and listen to this nerd data. He's like, oh, I like I like mind being fast in the mind. Maybe that's how Brandon writes so many books. Yeah, he's got. He's got that in the brain. <laughs> Actually, anyway. like it'd, it'd be impossible to have conversations with people because if your brain is functioning so much more with them, like you're going to be like 12 steps ahead of anything they say, yeah, obviously I mean, breaking it down. I imagine that'd just get alienating. I, mean, I, I like, use it all the time, right? So you could compound. We've got Miles who's compounding his gold, and that's just how he lives his life. Yeah. But you wouldn't you wouldn't be doing that all the time. Yeah. If you you had the ability comp- to compound them. So if you were just having a mm-hmm. conversation with someone, it wouldn't be really needed. But if you were trying to you know outsmart someone in war, then that would be quite a useful. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be cool if like you could use it to learn a language really like a foreign language really fast. Oh yeah, something. that's true. Mm. True. It makes me think of that scene from like the Sherlock Holmes movies where he's in the fight and then he. It, it slows down and he's thinking like 10 steps ahead in the fight about how it's going to go. And yeah, I, yeah. Be, uh, I'd always want to be really good at chess, so maybe I'd be good at chess then. Uh, so yeah, that that's just a, a cool question that you often see on Reddit or whatever. It's like, oh, what kind of twin-born would you want to be? And compounding obviously is a, a very useful kind of twin-born, but there's other stuff. I mean, Wax's combination is really cool, so you could think about you know just other combinations that are nice. But we have one email that I want to touch on before we run too long here. This email is titled an email, I guess, uh, from Mitch. And Mitch says, Sanderland Chins? Question mark. Longtime Discorder, first time emailer. First, welcome to my favorite non Stormlight series. Wax and Wayne, as you have seen, are quite the comedic duo. In a recent episode, fan casting was discussed. I vote for Danny DeVito to play both Wax and Wayne. <laughs> okay. Uh, Joe, your recent lack of all Final Fantasy references has been somewhat disappointing. Was it <laughs> the disappointment with lacking the hearing of reference? Oh, bummer. Wait, didn't I do that in a recent episode? Maybe this was, maybe he wrote Yeah, it that. might have been after this. Maybe that hasn't come yeah. out yet. That may not have come out yet. Because yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Speaking yeah. of Final Fantasy, I've been playing the reimagining of Final Fan- the original Final Fantasy game. It's not good. Oh, really? Uh, Yeah, it's pretty terrible. The... Combat's not bad, but it's like, it's just, it's like they thought, you know what would be really cool? Let's give people tons of armor with tons of different perk choices at tons of different levels from just random enemies around the world. Like, it just, like, I get an armor drop almost after every combat, but most of it's stuff I don't want and will never Mm, use. Yeah. It's just like, and it's just tedious to have to go through all of this stuff and decide, like, do I want this? Do I want to throw it away? Do I want to keep it? And also, it's like they tried, I guess they were trying to not stray too far from the original story, but because the original game was on NES, 
it's super it was super you know simplistic and so they basically made this version super simplistic so it's like it, it, it's almost like you're you're not getting any information about what's really going on and then also like they they keep skipping over stuff and just telling you what tell you what's happening in a in like a sentence or two as like a narrative it's like just just show it to me why 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 are we skipping over it hmm. so it's just it's weird i don't know maybe I, maybe i maybe i need to get a little farther and give it a chance but it's it's not great i hadn't played final fantasy the original final fantasy until pretty recently when they came out with that pixel remaster mm mm-hmm. mhm and so that's that was my first experience with it. It was okay. Yeah. The only thing I like about it um, is that you can switch jobs. So like you don't have to lock in as a fighter with a great sword. You could like lo- you could you could switch pretty fluidly into like a dagger wielder, a uh, magic user. Like it's mm. it's uh, similar to I guess uh, Final Fantasy X two in that way. But it doesn't. Oh yeah, you, know, you definitely do switch really easily. Yeah, you don't have to watch a cinematic every time you switch though, so that's good. I mean, honestly, Final Fantasy VII made a real good approach to that, where it's like some people are definitely better suited to a role, but depending on how you slot your materia and stuff, anybody could do almost anything that you want. Sure. To. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII again shows its superiority as a game. <laughs> uh, okay. And then uh, the only other thing in the email is, Dak, Jamie, it's a bit late, but congrats on the tiny human. Hey, thanks. And then there's a little bit that's just for me. And then it says, wasing to the time of next, Colo. So thank you, Mitch. We appreciate the email. Uh, Sasha sent us an email thank that it's going to have to wait for a few episodes uh, because it references something that's coming up. But she also, she sent it with a cool piece of art also. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun when we get there. You guys are going to love it. Interesting. But yeah, it's going to be it's like the last episode we record for this book that we're going to get to read her email. So but that's only three episodes from now. So we're getting close. Uh, no new reviews or anything this week. If you if you want to get one of these new misting names, leave us a, a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Or if you want to review somewhere else, send it to me. Uh, we'll totally do that. If you'd like to send us an email, the address is the at Gmail dot com. Find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and places like that where all the fun things are happening music by miracle of sound get that out there for next time we are reading three more chapters that's 14 15 and 16 making another jump of uh yeah that'll be 78 percent at the end of that so god damn yeah we're this one's just flying by it really is right and that's the thing is the other two books that are out so far in this one it's this was nine episodes the next one's 11 the next one's 12 so all of them are going to go by relatively quickly compared to what we've been doing with the other novels. So it'll be it'll be interesting and fun. Definitely kind of a lighter feel to them with stuff happening quickly, as we've kind of discovered here. Thank you, everyone, for listening and wasing to the time of next. Colo? When we lose everything that defines us, can we hold to the promise that binds us and carry on in? To tomorrow's sorrow When we're facing the ghosts of our destinies Will we turn or remain in the memories and choose?